Hello everyone, in this episode I will be answering Mihai Spuna's question. What are some good activities to improve helicopter skills in X-Plane 11? Freeware add-ons, okay. What if I gave you some tips, not just for X-Plane 11, but for all the sims out there? I am Sergio, editor and founder of Helicimmer.com and this is Ask Me Stuff. How can I practice my skills with helicopters? What add-ons should I get? What do I need to invest to help me achieve my goals in becoming a virtual helicopter pilot? These are questions that I've been asked myself in the beginning, so I relate to that sense of frustration and being completely lost. What I'm about to tell you is four exercises you can practice to improve your skills. We don't need a special location or scenery either, but we do need to make sure it suits our needs. The airfield you should pick to practice should, number one, be in a location that is comfortable to fly at. Do not pick an airport in the middle of a tight valley. For example, surrounded by mountains or tall trees, pick an airfield that is in an open area so that you can fly around comfortably without crashing into anything. Number two, make sure it's not surrounded by a lot of buildings either. Keep the surroundings really simple so that you not only have fewer chances of actually crashing into something, but also to keep your frame rate as high as possible. One of the reasons why people have issues controlling helicopters is a low frame rate. I explained it on another video that I will link here, so you can check it out. I will have other tips for you on that video as well. So go watch after you finish this video. I will also post the link in the video description. Keeping clean scenery around the airfield is an excellent way to keep your frames per second value higher. If you find an airport or airfield near the ocean, that is even better. Once you pick the airport, stick to it. Do all your training there for a while. Of course, you can fly whatever you want between sessions, but when you are doing your practice flights, do it there so that you are perfectly comfortable with the area and reduce the amount of variables. Also, fly with clear weather to remove any clouds from the sky. That will also help with the frame rate. And always fly with the same helicopter weight so that the helicopter handles in a more predictable way as well throughout the different sessions. All right, so what is it that you can do in that field that it can help you improve your skills? You can use the runway and its markings to help you set up a training program. The threshold, the touch zone, distance markers, the numbers, all of that can be your friend and used as a resource. You can use them all to assist you to mark specific maneuvers. Let me talk you through the four exercises that I have been mentioning from the start, which I have done for many years. For exercise number one, you can take off from the threshold or the numbers, head out to the touchdown zone and land. Then take off again, fly to the distance markers and land again, and so on until you reach the end of the runway. There you can do a couple of things, either turn 180 degrees and repeat everything, or fly a pattern and start all over again from the initial position. For exercise number two, you will take off, move to the next mark, hover and do a 360, then fly to the next mark. If you are really not comfortable with transitioning from forward flight to hover, then land. After that, take off, do a 360 degree pedal turn and move on to the next mark. Before moving on to the exercise number three, I'd like to take the chance to welcome you if you are new here on our channel and thank you very much for choosing to watch this video. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for that and I hope you continue to enjoy our content. If you are enjoying it, please consider liking this video and perhaps even watching a few more of our content here on YouTube. You'll find the link to some of other stuff at the end of this video. All right, let's move on to exercise number three then. For this one, you will take off, fly a circuit and land on the numbers. Just rinse and repeat. Instead of the numbers, start landing on other marks instead. Try to land as closely as possible to your goal. For an increased challenge, try hovering instead of touching down. For example, approach the runway transition to hover on top of the numbers and taxi hover to the next marks. There you can land or take off again and repeat. Once you are very comfortable with all this, you can start adding harder maneuvers. For exercise number four, we are taking it up a notch or two. Take off or hover at the numbers or the threshold, turn to the left or the right 90 degrees and then fly sideways to the next mark. Once there, turn 180 degrees and fly again sideways but facing the other way. Eventually, you can do all this by flying backward as well. Just make sure you fly really slow when you do these maneuvers as the helicopter will want to fly with the nose forward. So if you accelerate too much, you will want to yank and you will have a very hard time controlling it. 
As you can see, there is a lot you can do without any special add-ons. With just a helicopter, a runway and the runway markings, you have a bunch of increasingly hard exercises you can do that will help you progress throughout your career as a virtual helicopter pilot. And I didn't even mention the easiest exercise you can do. Well, it's not really the easiest, it's rather hard. Probably the hardest thing you'll ever do in a virtual helicopter, but it is very easy to do at any airport. So here's a bonus exercise for exercise number five, we have the hover. Place the helicopter at the start of the runway, keep your eyes at the other end of the runway, not at the ground near you, start lifting the collective slowly, keep the nose straight, and start that hover. Yeah, it's not as easy as telling you how to do it, but you'll eventually overcome that challenge. And what about pinnacles, elevated helipads and all that? Well, to be able to progress to those, you need to get the basics first. The rest is mostly not exactly the same, but mostly a matter of putting all that knowledge to use. Just connect the dots. You have to have some things in consideration, such as out of ground effect and in ground effect as you approach a pinnacle or the top of a building, for example, but the basic principles of landing and hovering still apply. And you will have a lot of muscle memory built already and a pretty accurate perception of how the helicopter will behave. Of course, there are some products, some scenery out there that will offer you a lot of challenges, such as slopes, elevated helipads, but you can still practice that on scenery buildings and mountains or hills in the sim, for example. I do recommend you take a look at those products, but for someone that's just starting with helicopters and has already done a few investments, spending money in another scenery may not be in their plans right away. By all means, do get a training scenery if you feel like it or if you want to extra challenge, but the bottom line of this video, what I really wanted you to grasp is that you don't need extra or special add-ons to practice and improve your skills. You can do that with everything you have right now. If you already have a sim, a helicopter, and a set of controls, you are all set. Thank you very much once again for watching. I will be seeing you all in the next video. Until then, take care and fly safe.